This is the riff on Beitza, Daf Yud Dalid, Amid Aleph. Um, we start with the Mishnah. Beishamay Omrim Tavum Nidoch and Madoch Shal Eitz Vamelach, Vamelach Befach, Beitza Parod. Beishamay say spices may be crushed on Yom Tov with a wooden pestle and salt in an earthenware flask or, or a wooden mixing spoon. Beisil Omrim, Beisil will argue and say Tavum Nidoch and Kedarkon. Uh, spices can be uh, crushed in the normal way. Madoch shall even in a uh, with a stone pestle. Vahamelach uh, vahamadoch shall eat and salt with a pestle of uh, wood with a wooden pestle. Now, uh, just to point out, uh, you have a mortar and a pestle. The mortar is the uh, bowl-like uh, thing, and the pestle is uh, the thing that you take and crush it into the mortar. Um, although there's no mortars that are actually mentioned in this Mishnah, and we're only talking about pestles here. And that could be by design, or it could just be that it was implicit. Um, and in fact, you can see in the Gemara, it will play out in various ways. Um, so now on to the Gemara. The Gemara says, Amar Yehuda Amar Shmuel, Kal HaNidochin, Nidochin Kedarkon. And everything that is crushed is, can be crushed in its normal way, Vafilu Malach, and even salt. Amr le Rav le Ravacha bar Dula. Rav said to Ravacha bar Dula, "Kidayach atz levedach." When you crush, you should tilt the pestle. You should tilt it and crush. Uh, now, this is actually slightly different than the Gersh in our Gemara. Instead of being uh, Rav talking to Ravacha bar Dula, um, it's instead. Uh, Rav Achabardula said to his son, and that could actually possibly play out in terms of uh, how we would end up asking. But here, uh, the Rif's gear says Rav said this to Rav Achabardula. Um, it's also interesting. Uh, we'll talk about possibly. Uh, no, we're not going to talk about it. But if you look in the Yerushalmi, uh, these opinions of Rav and Shmuel uh, are switched. Uh, with Rav actually saying calling Yedoch and Yedoch and Kedarkon although it doesn't say Vapilu Melach and it's uh, Shmuel uh, who comes up with the idea of tilting and crushing and uh, that could also play out because we pass in like Rav over Shmuel so uh, that's in fact what we're doing over here we're going to kind of discard uh, Shmuel in favor of uh, this halacha of Rav because we pass in like Rav there uh, the to Rav in this statement of Rav uh, the riff continues. Akuma uh, Rabba Vasa, the sages. We're talking about whenever uh, the riff says Rabba Vasa, it means the post Talmudic sages. So Gonim, for example. So the sages established this. The post Talmudic sages established it in Milcha, um, talking about by salt that you should uh, tilt it and crush. Aval Tavlin, but spices low by Hasla don't require this tilting of the pestle. Um, and this uh, interpretation uh, is supported from this that, we, that Rav Sheshes said in the Gemara. Dama Rav Sheshes that Shama called Buchna. He heard the noise of a pestle. Amar, he said, "Hi, love, me go beisai." This is not coming from within my house. So apparently, he didn't hold uh, by crushing things on uh, Yom Tov. Vakshinon, uh, and we ask on this uh, very short story, Vidilma, uh, maybe uh, the person that was using this mortar that Rav Sheshes heard, and uh, now Rav Sheshes, by the way, was, was blind, so that's why we're talking about a case where he's hearing something as opposed to seeing something, so he heard this sound. So maybe uh, the person tilted the pestle and Vidaike, uh, and he was crushing. Uh, so how could he say, I love Migo Besai, this is not from my house? Uh, uh, and we answer that Shamei de Habet Sil Kalei. He heard that its sound was clear, um, which wouldn't have been the case uh, had somebody tilted for the, the pestle for the purpose of crushing. And then it continues in the Gemara asking on the story, the Dilma Tablin Hava, uh, maybe he was actually crushing, he was crushing spices as, as opposed to, say, salt. So um, the Gemara answers, Tablin Nebuche Minabach. Um, the spices make a loud noise when being crushed, and he didn't hear this as being a loud noise. Um, so, uh, 
uh, sorry, Nebuche Menabach Kalaihu, its sound is loud. Now, we become Akshinan, and the fact that we ask, maybe he tilted it and crushed it, and that he heard that its sound was clear, and then we go back and we ask again, the Dilma Tablon Havai Shaminan, Tablon Havai, and we ask perhaps it was spices, Shaminan, we deduce from this, the Tablon Lob Abau Hatzla. We deduce that uh, spices uh, don't require this kind of tilting, because first we said, well, we, we knew that it wasn't tilted because it, uh, its sound was clear, and so we now say, okay, so it wasn't tilted, but maybe it was spices, which implies that if, uh, if it's spices, but uh, without a tilt, it would be fine. But Mel Shimon, and, uh, and automatically we deduce from this, Dadam Rav Lurvacha Bardua, uh, this uh, Rav said to Rav Bardula that, that you should tilt the pestle and crush. He was talking specifically in terms of salt, about tavlin. Uh, but spices, spices don't require this tilting. And so uh, where it was the halacha ruled, the halachos psukos, the halachos gedolos. Um, and these two sarim from the Gaonim, Halachos Psukos was from uh, Review Daigon, and Halachos Gedolos uh, was written by the Bahag, it's an anonymous affair, Bahag is Baal Halachos Gedolos, uh, some attribute it to Shimon Kayara. Um, continuing uh, the Gemara, as cited by the Rift, Tino Rabbanon, the sages learnt in a Brisa, Ein Osin Tisni, the Ein Kochin Be Machteshas. So now we're no longer talking about a pestle which is what the Mishnah was talking about, but we're talking about a mortar, which is the other portion of this, uh, uh, of, of this set of mortar and pestle. So uh, the Bryce says we don't make tisni. Tisni is wheat kernel grits, so we don't make them any amdov, and we don't crush uh, in a mortar. And it's somewhat problematic because tisni you always use, uh, uh, you, you can crush with, uh, with a mortar. Um, uh, sorry, the t- uh, tisni imp- uh, implies uh, crushing with a mortar because that's the way that you make tisni. Um, so we answer, uh, uh, my tam ain't osin tisni. Uh, how come we don't make tisni? Uh, because you don't crush with a mortar, because had we not resolved it like that, you might think that you can make other things. Um, and the mortar is only specifically tisni you don't make. So the answer is, no, this is just an example. We don't make tisni because ein kochen uh, uh Continuing the Gemara. Um, okay, the Hamasnisen, Masnisa. And this Brisa that we just said, that Enos and Tisni, the Enos and Ein Kochen Machtashas, where it doesn't say. Um, a specific size of this machdashas of this mortar. Ukimna Livnei Eretz Yisrael. We establish it for the residents of Eretz Yisrael. About uh, Lididan, but for us, for us in Babel, kochin machdashas kitana. We can uh, crush in a small mortar. Disanya, because we learned a different brisa in kochin machdashas kedola. You don't. Uh, crush in a large mortar, about coach in Machdashas Kitana, but you do uh, crush in a small mortar. Vukimna uh, Livnei Vavel. And we establish this as, the re- as this latter Bryce is referring uh, to uh, for the residents of Babel. And various reasons are proposed by various commentators for this. One possibility is the possibility suggested later, a little bit later in the Gemara, that in Babel, um, I mean, in Eretz Yisrael, they had servants who wouldn't make this distinction and would end up using uh, the large mortar, uh, and so they just uh, made a blanket rule, no mortars. Uh, but it's not said explicitly, you could come up with other reasons. Rav Papi Ikhla Levei Mar Shmuel. Rav Papi visited the house of Mar Shmuel, Aisulei Daisa, and they brought before him Daisa. Now, Daisa is another type of uh, wheat. It's kind of like uh, tisni, um, but it's not as crushed as finely as tisni. Tisni is broken into four pieces each, and this into less than uh, four bits each. Uh, so Rav Papi visited the house of Marshmallow. They brought him some uh, daisa, 
and the um, achil, and he didn't eat it. And so the question is, how come he didn't eat it? So with come the suggestions. Maybe it was made uh, with a small mortar, and if so, he should have been able to eat it. So Chazia da have a He saw that it was very finely crushed, and so it must have been made uh, with a large mortar. Dilma Maybe it uh, had been made from yesterday, from Erev uh, Yom So if so. Uh, it would have been permitted to eat because he's just not eating something that was prepared in a large mortar on Yom Tov. So, uh, how, how did he know this? So, have a He saw that it was peeled and streaked white uh, today, um, very much, and so he knew that it wasn't done from the previous day. The Bayasayman, if you want, I'll tell you, shiny baby of Shmuel, he didn't actually uh, uh, see this. Um, but the house uh, that it was uh, crushed finely, uh, such that he knew that a large mortar was uh, there. Uh, however, shiny bay Marshmallow, uh, the house of Marshmallow is different. Dika pitusa de abde because there's the carelessness of the servants. They had servants uh, serving in uh, Marshmallow's house, and so as we said earlier, they could have uh, made uh, they could they could have used a large mortar. Now on to the Mishnah. Uh, the Mishnah states, Haborer uh, kitnios Yom Tov. If one separates legumes on Yom Tov, Beishama Yom Borer Ochel Ochel. Beishama, I say that he should separate uh, food from the impurities and eat it. Uvesil Yom Borer Kedarko. He can separate in, or in his normal way. The Kanon Uvetamchui in uh, with a funnel or a plate. Uh, in Argomer it says Bechiko uh, uh, in his lap, but uh, that's not cited in the mission as brought down by the Rif. Uh, but it says Bechanon of Tamchoi in a funnel, with a funnel or with one of these large plates, these Tamchois. Velo Betavla, Velo Benapa, Velo Bekevara. But not with a board or a fine sieve or a coarse sieve. Rabban Gamliel Omer, Af Mediach Vishalech. Uh, Rabbi Gamaliel says he may even rinse and skim uh, when uh, doing this. Uh, on to the Gemara. Tanya. Uh, they learned in a brisa. Uh, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamaliel Omer. Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamaliel says, "Amurim bizman shahochel merubal hapsolas." When the food is more than the uh, than the impurities of hapsolas merubal haochel, but if the impurities are more than the food, divrei hakal. Uh, that he, everybody agrees that he should take the food and leave the impurities there. Um, so now the Gemara asks, if the impurities are more than the actual food, pshita, it's obvious. Would there be anybody that actually permits? Uh, so the answer, the answer is the Gemara, la uh, No, it actually is needed. The nafesh betircha. The uh, zuter b'shura. We're talking when we, when we say that the impurities uh, outnumber the uh, food. We're talking about uh, where it's more effort involved for the impurities, but it's less in terms of the actual measure of it. On to the next mishnah. Beishamay omrim ein mshalchem biyamtov elamanos. You can only send prepared portions on yamtov. Uh, uh, Beis Hillel say you can send uh, a behema, a domesticated animal, chaya, a wild animal, the oaf, a fowl, chayin uh, whether they're alive um, or already shechted, already slaughtered. And there's also is a slight difference um, in the girsa here in our mission in our Gemara. It says bein chayin bein shchutin, but uh, here it doesn't say that. It's, uh, it doesn't really matter uh, semantically. It's the same thing. Uh, con- uh, continuing um, in the Mishnah, uh, so we say mishalchen yenos shmanim v'siltat. We can send wines, oils, and flowers, the kidneyos and legumes, about low to but not uh, grain. And 
Rabbi Shimon Mazer Bisfua, and Rabbi Shimon permits with grain. Um, so now on to the Gemara. Tnei. Uh, the Gemara. Tnei Rabbi Chiel. Rabbi Chiel taught um, this. Uh, so Tnei. Ubuvashlo Yase Keshura. As long as he doesn't do it in a line. In other words, we said we can only send. Uh, we, we can send uh, these items on Yom Tov, so he's adding that you can't do it in the line of gift, be- gift bearers, because then it's going to look uh, like you're bringing things to the marketplace. Um, so that was one uh, Tanitic statement that uh, he taught. And uh, then we're going to uh, continue to now, we, the Atama taught, in Shura, Pechusa Migimel Bnei Adam. This Shura, this line of people, uh, that's... Uh, Define this a minimum of three people. Uh, now the mission ended. Uh, Rabbi Shimon Matya uh, Bishvua, and we pass him like Rabbi Shimon here. So just to explain this, Shalchitin Lasos Mehem Masasiyat, wheat to make uh, pounded wheat with as- as- uh, And The Argumara has. Budiot, which is a different type of wheat dish, but uh, it's more or less equivalent to giving something that you could use this uh, tivua for. Um, so in uh, barley is leaking with nebemto, since it's considered animal fodder to put before his uh, animal. The uh, shin lentils lasas miem visisim in order to make groats out of. So uh, this is uh, what you can use each of these things for, and that's why uh, Rabbi Shimon permits with grain. On to the next Mishnah. Um, Shach and Kalim, you can send Kalim. Kalim, in this case, doesn't mean vessels, it means uh, clothing or garments. So, Shach and Kalim, Tzfurin, and Tzfurin. You can send uh, clothing on Yom Tov, Yom Tov, whether they're sewn or unsewn. Athalpi, Sheyesh Behan, uh, even though they have shotness in them. And this is if they're for the purpose of the festival, for the needs of the festival. Uh, but you can't send a sandal with spikes in it, um, a spiked sandal. And uh, not a, a, sh- a shoe which was not sewn. That is not completed in the latter case, and so it's of no use. Um, Yehuda Omer, Af Loman Al Levan. Not even a white shoe, which still needs uh, to be blackened. And they shoot Sarachuman because it needs a craftsman to blacken it, so it's also not complete. Zach, wow, this is the general rule. Kal, Shineosis, and Shineosin Bo, Biyamtov, and Mishal Chanosah. Anything which. Um, you use on Yom Tov, you can send. Um, and as we'll see later in the Gemara, there's two ways of parsing this, uh, and, and we're going to re-parse it. Instead, of, instead we're going to say, is that all is the general rule? Kol bo, anything which you can use, in general. Um, um, on Yom Tov, you can send it. So it doesn't need to be specifically of use on Yom Tov, it could be of use in general. Um, but we'll get to that shortly in the Gemara. Now, on to the Gemara. Um, okay. Gemara Bishloma, Tfurin, Chazal, Malbush. If it's sewn clothing, it's uh, fit to be used as clothing to wear. Shainan is Farin, Nami, Have Lukisli. It's also fine. Unsewn clothing, you can use it for covering things. Al Kalam, if it's shotten, is Lamai Chazi. For what use is it? Yechite, Machazu, Lamazga, Laihu. Um, and if you say that it's good for uh, sitting, uh, for folding uh, underneath you, this is the Mazda, we need to slightly amend the text to make it match our Gemara, but uh, it, it's fit for folding under you. Uh, under you. Lasagna, but we learned in a Brisa, uh, where we cite the Pasuk in Vayikra, uh, Yutas Yutas. Uh, where the Pasuk says, So uh, is it not allowed? Translated, you shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your cattle 
uh, gender with a diverse kind with another species. Uh, you shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed. And then it ends, neither shall there come upon you uh, a garment of two kinds of stuff mingled together. So lo ya'ala lecha. And ya'ala has a connotation of coming up over you. So they make a drasha, lo ya'ala lecha, but uh, you can uh, spread it under you. So lo ya'ala lecha, aval ata matziya tachtacha, you can fold it under you. Um, so that's the drasha over there that they made, aval amru chachamim the uh, sages said, and thus decreed, Asr Lasos Kane, it's forbidden to do so. Xera Shema Tichrach Nima Achas Al Besaro. Lest a single thread uh, bend over uh, on his flesh. Um, and then he will end up violating this biblical loyal alecha. So it couldn't be uh, that uh, we're talking about you could send Bege uh, Kilayim um, on Yom Tov because uh, you can't use it to spread underneath you. So that can't be the reason why it's okay to use. Um, now, uh, it's going to continue um, that the chitema the mafsik midi beni beni and maybe something is separating in between him and uh, this, uh, this baguette of shatnas in which case you don't have to worry about a thread bending over and the uh, uh, coming on his flesh, so that wouldn't be covered by the Zera, and so once again that could be the reason why you could send it on Yom Tov. So, uh, Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Pasi, uh, Amar uh, uh, Rabbi Yossi ben Shal, Mishum Kil Kadisha Shabir Shulayim. So, uh, he cited this practice in the name of the holy congregation of Yushalayim. Afilu Etzer Matzah Odzal Gabezal. Even uh, ten beddings, one on top of the other, with kilam beinehem, and kilam between them. And it really, uh, we should amend the text back to what we have in our Gemara: kilam uh, under them, tachtehem. Aser lishen alehem. It's uh, forbidden uh, to sleep upon them. So it couldn't be that you're using it for the purpose of of putting under you. So then, what is the reason that you could send it on Yom Tov? The Ella Vilon, maybe uh, it's to use as a curtain. But, and we're going to reject that. But Amar Ula, Ula said, Amru Vilon Asur, how come we said that a Vilon of Shatnas is, a curtain of Shatnas is forbidden? Because the Shamish, the attendant, sometimes warms himself by it, uh, with it. Uh, so that would also be uh, forbidden. So it doesn't make sense that that would be why you can uh, send it on Yom Tov. Rather, we're talking about with stiff material, and so once again, you're sitting on them, but it's uh, stiff, and so it won't, uh, a thread won't come upon his flesh. Uh, this hard felt of Narash, Narash was a place, is permitted, and what does he mean permitted? Permitted to sit upon. So that's what the uh, mission is saying that you could send. Uh, a Kalim, even if it's uh, Kilayim.